as she can. Uh, but I guess we should just start off um, by, you know, like we've already mm-hmm. sort of met each other. So probably by breaking the ice a little bit more, so to get our conversations rolling. Um, so right now we spoke mostly about ourselves and our career bias and you know in terms of what we do uh, and stuff but um, one of the interesting introductions uh, that I've struggled a lot with is tell us about you without mentioning anything about your work. Um, so would any of you lovely ladies want to go first? <laughs> So let me go because I've been thinking about this ever since I got saw your question of like how does somebody do that and then the only thing I could think of it was um, of, of saying something which sounds very silly right now but in my head it sounds really cool yesterday was uh, my best friends at work are uh, the soil and bacteria because I work a lot with uh, fermented products and I work a lot with growing food um, and so that's the only thing I could think of when I say I'm like I don't know what people are going to make off that but yeah my best friends at work are soil and bacteria so if, if, if that makes any sense <laughs> <laughs> No that makes a lot of sense like I mean it tells a lot <laughs> about you and to go to speak on a more philosophical level aren't we all <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> Well yeah <laughs> Uh, okay, great. Uh, say us a little, you want to go next? <clears throat> yeah, like this is a really tough question actually, I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, so I'm also like a band hoodie, like I love band lore. Uh, I did go to Delhi to study for a couple of years, but I came back running. I was like, no, I can't do anything other than band lore. So I love band lore. Um, traveling, I've been into plays also, like I used to do a lot of plays in my college time and things like that uh, mm-hmm. so those are some of my passions uh, yeah like a lot of for speaking and dramatics which you can see and that's where my profession is headed but yeah <laughs> Joita, do you want to tell us about you without telling us about your work? <laughs> sure, uh, I would like to talk about anything but my work right now <laughs> but, you know, uh, sh- hey there we have got a purva. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So, um, yeah, so she, uh, like Shamli said that, you know, um, her, her, you know, food and science, I would always relate to it. I, I think I have discussed this a number of times with my mom. Uh, you know, cooking is is science, food is science, and there's just so much science involved in it, uh, in an absolutely layman term. Uh, but there's just, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I would completely relate to that. Um, of, uh, well, I'm a mom uh, who is trying to feed a, a girl who is already on a diet, a 10 year old who's already on several diets in a year uh, and trying different things. Uh, I'm always exploring. Um, yeah, that's about me. Uh, great, thank you so much. Um, Apurva, hi. So just like a quick introduction about you uh, okay. and also introducing yourself without actually, you know, telling us about your work, but about you as a person. Got it. Um, I'm Apurva, a big foodie uh, and a very, very enthusiastic uh, person about technology. Um, I think uh, when I kind of heard about Nimble, I kind of went crazy, like there's a machine which can cook food. (laughs) It was almost like uh, uh, magic. I've been at forefront of technology uh, and just love exploring uh, new things that kind of come in. Um, Love eating, uh, perpetual problem of weight gain throughout life (laughs) because just can't control eating out and uh, love traveling as well. Uh, Married, her husband's a pilot, settled in Bangalore. Uh, Yeah, that's pretty much sums up the life. Great. So, just moving on to the second question. Um, If you were a a dish on Julia, what would you be? Joyita, do you want to take this? (laughs) Well, I've only got visibility to seven dishes. Uh, uh, so <laughs> I I'm really eyeing on my gajar kalwa right now, but uh, certainly I would be grated to. Uh, so uh, uh, I I would say paneer bhuji. Uh, that was my I think our family's favorite. We we made that twice uh, during the time, and it was super easy. And um, I didn't know that just four ingredients just make uh, such a lovely dish. Um, so yeah, I, I would say paneer bhaji because uh, it it was um, it was delicious. Okay. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> sorry about again the limited menu. You won't let us go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am going to 
I throughout this call I'm going to make sure I do this to you. <laughs> so um, that you send it back to me. I was Julia. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, sure, definitely. Uh, now that we have twenty, and we'll actually adding more recipes uh, over and over. We'll definitely um, show you more of the newer recipes, and also like you can taste some of them. Uh, but uh, Shamali, do you want to tell us if you were a dish on Julia, what would it be? I think it would be the um, well tofu. Mutter tofu uh, because we made the tofu version of it. Um, I just think it was so delicious and tomato based anything is just my thing. Um, tomato based gravy is always my go to and it was just so tasty. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah actually, that was one of our hit recipes as well. Uh, yeah, it was really amazing. <laughs> I, it just feels like I tried it too early. Like, none of this was there when I tried it. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> you are one more person. I did not take this through. <laughs> <laughs> Should have thought through before deciding on your guest panelist. <laughs> Or I should have sent you guys all of the other recipes that you didn't try, so that I wouldn't be oh like the roasted in this. Um, but Sazel, do you want to tell us uh, if you yeah. were a dish, what would you? Be? I think I would uh, be the chawal ki kheer uh, one because it was definitely super delicious. All my grandmothers loved it because they had come over for lunch, and I am actually very popular with older people, and you know, like super sweet, I guess. <laughs> so I think uh, chawal ki kheer, and I don't like conflict. So like people tell me like, okay, you're not going to like, you know, conflicting or confronting. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's move on. So I'm very much like okay, let's do this. So the the chawal ki kheer, the rice which is like half cooked, the sweet of the milk. Yeah, I think I'm that. <laughs> that's a that's a very lovely description. Uh, Apurva, again, sorry about the limited menu <laughs> yeah, disclaimer. <laughs> But please tell us if you were a dish on Julia, what would you? I think I'll probably be Rajma Rasila. I kind of get better with time, so uh, you know, uh, wow. <laughs> definitely a protein-packed, powerful dish. Uh, and I think that kind of does represent uh, what I am. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I definitely be Rajma Rasila. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the other now, what would you be? Uh, I think I'll be Delhi Wale Rajma mm-hmm. because even though it's Delhi Wale Rajma, I think it's uh, it, it, it's okay to all the palates and it's. quite tangy and it's good tangy i think it's something that i think i can closely relate my personality to so i i i'll definitely be delhi wale rajma okay <laughs> uh, nice I, i think i'll probably be the veg pulao like you know uh, the, com- uh. the complete package <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay great so uh, while we're talking about food uh, and also touched upon a little bit about julia let's talk also about food while we were growing up considering i think uh, apart from like talking about how all of you miss julia you all said that we were all we are all foodies let's face it that's why we were uh, and that's why we're talking uh, but so what was your one of your favorite food memories growing up i mean i know this is a very open ended question so it could be literally anything either the first time you cooked or the first time uh, something didn't go wrong or your favorite uh, nostalgic food it could be anything uh, but just what's your favorite food memory uh, apurva you want to go first i think definitely gujia around holi uh, mm-hmm. one of my favorites uh, and also like having to wait for the gujia to be done like what the filling inside gujia is so yummy when you kind of make it like the entire process you make khoa then you uh, kind of you know put uh, coconut to it and my mom would do it and then she'll give us tasks to uh, you know get all ingredients in place and then uh, we would kind of eat like 25% of it before it was ready to be rolled into the gujia and then fry it <laughs> uh, and then i think that entire thing and for two days before holi everyone just like okay aaj gujia banegi aaj gujia banegi i think uh, definitely has Like that nostalgia attached to it. Uh, definitely an amazing dish. Uh, very very popular in North India. So for me, I think that's that's my most favorite memory around food. Okay. So Sazel, do you want to tell us also about your favorite food? 
Yeah, I think uh, it it used to be during Diwali, like right after Diwali, uh, there was this tradition where uh, so my grandmom was like the eldest of like her side of the family, and they, they used to invite everyone for so every year we used to have this customary lunch uh, where almost sixty people used to come over, and my mom, my grandmom, my aunts, and they used to like cook like so like the quantity used to be insane, and we as kids would be like how does like how do they even manage it? And even till today, I'm like I can't. Cook for more than four people, but they would like whip stuff for sixty people. On that note, what is the worst meal that you've ever cooked? <laughs> I think uh, probably for all of us, we've experimented a lot with food. I'm sure either moving away from families where we learned to cook for the first time, or like you know having experimented even when we were younger. But uh, what was the worst meal that you've ever cooked? So um, it's similar to the poha incident. It's a vermicelli. So I some of the packets say that you know you're supposed to soak it in hot water. Some of them say boil it in hot water or whatever the instructions. I I missed reading it. It was a lump of noodles. It was I don't know what it was. And when you eat it, it was just sticking to your upper palate. It was horrible. And my husband said, you know, let's just just throw it out. Uh, <laughs> you know, let's just it's okay. You know, I know what you try to do here. Let's just throw it out. But I still was insisting that the taste is good. And I made uh, cupcakes out of those in uh, you know that paneeram uh, pan. I made like cupcakes and I I tried to. Feed my family with that. I said you have to have it. And Shamali, what about you? So my story is also when my parents weren't at home, and me and my brother, who's five years younger than me, uh, when we were kids, um, he was going through this phase where he wanted to make rotis all the time for some reason, um, and uh, he did not. He we was okay at it. Like it wasn't. They were edible. Um, and then we had uh, my my mom's brother was coming to visit us, and he, he he's like you know he doesn't do that often, so we wanted to do that. We wanted to make something special for him. Um, so my brother decided to innovate, and um, he and I ended up putting Milo inside the dough of the roti. Um, and we made it made a new invention called Milo roti or Milo poi. Um, oh. And uh, because we were so small, uh, we insisted that he eat it because we liked it. We thought it was amazing. Uh, but uh, later we found out it really wasn't. Um, and because we were kids, and you know he didn't want to disappoint us, he did end up finishing one whole roti. Um, I don't know how, uh, but yeah, I think to date this is this is like a big family crack of stories. We made uh, roti with Milo, and I don't know what else in it, but the Milo is like the main ingredient. and it was bad <laughs> that's all i have a similar roti story also mm-hmm. like uh, not with milo though but it's just that my rotis are never round like i've been trying for years now like i don't know how my mom does it because it rotates while she's doing like she's uh, rolling and i can't do it every time my mom tells me that my rotis look like the map of india <laughs> and what i used to do is to impress her i used to put a bowl on top of the entire thing cut take the sides out and make it perfectly round like nobody would ever know that i have uh, done some jugaad there but yeah that's the roti story i have <laughs> yeah i think all of us will have either depending on whether you're not in your south indian like a dosa story <laughs> or a roti story <laughs> uh i think uh, that i also wanted uh, this is my favorite question that i asked a lot of people uh, when i uh, when things started opening up to an extent which is what was the one thing that you craved the most during the pandemic that you could not get your hands to on to i need to come me i don't think i craved for anything else somebody to come and do the dishes <laughs> There's nothing else that I crave more than. Uh, no, for me it was absolutely chart i traveled i think 8 kilometers just because i found out somebody somewhere was sell- selling puris um nobody was selling puris at all i don't know how many people and finally um one of the nilgiri stores in kormangla had them and i bought eight packages i'm like i don't care if i can finish them or not i'm stocking up on these your kind of stocking up <laughs> yeah, i and i was the only one doing that there was another person there who was buying a lot of puri packages i don't know if they're having a party or they were just like me Uh, but I stocked up, and so chaat was definitely. Uh, I mean, I can make chaat at home without the puris, but pani puri is something else. But I mean, I just you could not. Like a few months, I'm like this is crazy. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I really crave for the hot chocolate fudge of corner house. Like that. <laughs> oh my god! Like you know, everything. Like I think it was lockdown when I actually started cooking. Also, like before that, don't have any such like you know I could cook or anything. But lockdown definitely brought that out. But like the desserts, that corner house hot chocolate fudge. <laughs> that like I think it opened a little earlier. Also, and I was like, give it to me. Like <laughs> I love that chocolate sauce. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody mentioned that because that was one of the things that. I <laughs> But don't worry, we. I think I think most of us have stopped. <laughs> uh, talking about food, one of the one of the main reasons why we're also like doing this is also to you know celebrate women, celebrate women in in leadership. IWB 2021 is all about women in leadership. um so switching tracks to that part of the conversation as well let's talk about uh, you know our own hype squad uh, of women who we have in our lives so who are some women who you look up to um as as i mentioned this could be literally anybody either leaders celebrities um colleagues family anybody friends uh so anybody who wants to go first Uh, so for me, um, it's definitely been my mom. My mom's run a small business on her own ever since I can remember. It's been almost um, 20, 25 years. Um, and we're originally from Pune. Um, I'm originally from there. Um, and my dad actually found a job in Bangalore. In it's been 12 years now. Um, and he lives in Bangalore. My mom decided to stay put um, and continue the business. And my mom, my dad travels home every weekend, which because of the pandemic is not that uh, easy anymore. but yeah so um he would travel home every weekend uh, from bangalore to pune so he could spend the weekend with us and he would spend the weeks here um all of this while me and my brother were still teens pre teens um and my mom's kind of handled the business handled home handled us um everything all by herself and she's still doing it because my dad still is like she he still shuttles between bangalore and pune um and a lot of the family members then maybe thought it was a very weird thing to do um uh, at least back then it wasn't a very common thing for a husband and wife to live so far far away uh, especially when you have young kids um but now in hindsight when i think about it when i talk to my mom about it um it just is a lot of support on my dad's side but it's so much courage on her side to stay put and say no i want to do what's right for me while doing what's right for everybody else because you choose career and you that's why you're going um, you know going to stay in a different city uh, but i should also have that option and so i would stay put um and not leave everything and come move to bangalore because it's your career over mine um and obviously not everybody understands that concept or not everybody understands um that it's okay to do that but we're all fine and everybody's fine so for me um how somebody you know 10 15 years ago took a decision that strong to stay put and say no i will put my career um as equal to my family and you know be an inspiration for my kids um was is i i don't think anything gets bigger for me than that because uh she could have easily said okay let me just quit everything and you know we'll have a to have a happier life or like you know we'll all be together every single day as a family uh but she stayed put for me i think that's that's uh, one of the biggest i don't think anything can come beyond that i think i kind of just find it inspirational like every time i see somebody you know is trying to break their boundaries like it's not like one particular person but um you know recently there's a young mom who kind of took a break for like 3 years she came back to my team um you know i think her story itself is kind of quite inspirational for me you know how she's trying to manage it and um you know my when i see um, somebody like you who's trying to you know uh, change how like let's say marketing is done i think in general i, I think probably it's a female affection or something you know <laughs> every time i kind of see people trying to push their boundaries to do more um it's just inspirational and uh, i know like a lot of us kind of have uh, some inhibition you know like are we are we good are we not good and uh, every time i see somebody you know overcoming that and kind of like just shining uh, some of us have like privileged upbringing some of us didn't have uh, some of us face different challenges um, and and it, it it is i think no uh, no hiding fact that our society does have a little bit more challenges for women in general um so i think i just find that the entire way people are now changing right from your mom who did so many years ago and women continue to do that even today but for me i think it's more inspirational when you know young mothers try to come back to workforce um in fact uh, you know uh, i think uh, i'm sure it takes a lot of courage to kind of yeah. try to find that balance between uh, you know 
okay then let's say your life and then still wanting a career for yourself so i think um every mother out there who's returning to workforce uh, definitely kind of inspires me a lot that is so beautiful like i mean in the sense that uh when we say role model like we think that it means to be somebody who's done this done that but like every day we like all of us are we've done so much of stuff in our lives and like all of us are you know like our own height scored in one or the other way and, mm-hmm. and i think that's that's amazing like um i, I, I don't know i just feel great uh, hearing you talk about uh, you know the stories of such uh, all of our normal lives we've like gone yeah. through a lot of stuff uh, broken so many boundaries to bear to be where we are today and i think that's Um, and I think a lot of us just don't realize it, but we do it. Uh, <coughs> some of us just ignore everything and went ahead with it. But uh, you know, I think all of us in our own realms have achieved a lot, uh, and that just that just makes me a lot very happy in general. You know? So on on that note, like we all know that we do a lot of things. We take on, uh, we are, uh, you know, on a daily basis, we do much more uh, than like you know. either our partners or our counterparts uh and it, it becomes to that point where we sometimes forget to take care of ourselves um right so so on that note like what's the best self care tip that you probably have for some of us here everyone be it a woman a man any gender i think for every individual independence is very important and there are very different dimensions to it so th- there's some we always think about uh, say physical independence but then there's something called mental or emotional independence and i think uh, all of these independence are important for uh, everyone and financial independence i think is something uh, which helps us acquire all the other independence it makes all the other independence a bit easier so uh, that is something i think uh, one for first and foremost thing i advise as myself as a woman and all other women that you know let's seek financial independence because that is only when we can go ahead and be more independent uh, socially mentally and emotionally and uh, even though we have a lot of fabulous homemakers who do a lot of unpaid labor at home and let's appreciate them and help them attain their independence at the same time because they are also putting in a lot of labor which we don't in our current social system recognize as a uh, paid labor so i think that is something we need to recognize by ourselves and help other women with uh, conversation and verbos to understand that that is the level of independence they need to gain to be happy in their life i i i have two two things to say but you know uh, those could be quite contradicting to each other in a very fine line but if you don't look at it that way uh first is you don't have to be the best at everything um you don't have to be the best uh, of friend you don't have to be the best of mother uh best of wife uh, you don't have to uh, you know you're not competing against anyone but while i'm saying that i'm also saying that you don't need to you should not be complacent with what you have uh, and what you can do um what you should be doing is always trying to be better for yourself if if i am uh, if people are saying that i'm i'm you know i've i'm fat uh, it it's not everyone is really telling you because you know you look bad it's probably the health reasons that they're concerned with so don't it's not for others but you know it's something that you need to be very very um you know very be, uh, take take care of yourself uh, take take out the time because you can't be complacent with what you are because i have seen people drastically change over the years is because they knew that they they need to take care of themselves um it's about um not about dressing well it's about your health i think health is utmost important um and i think that's where you should not be complacent as well as achieving what you can do um that's why i said you know um uh, there's a very thin, thin line uh, it might be contradicting but you know what you can do i have seen people start their career at 50 I have seen uh, you know a uh, woman really uh, realizing that they 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 can do so many things at a later age but you know they just probably ex- exploring and when once you let that you know yourself open up and and see your skills just don't be complacent that I know this but I don't think I can reach that top uh, but you know it's for your own satisfaction it comes with financial aid as well um you know financial stability as well i think let's not be complacent with what where we are and what we do 
I think uh, that's that's an excellent thing we all agreed with like one is let's not try to like whatever conditioning we all have had since childhood let's not try to be that image of the ideal woman that has been put into our mind let's not try to achieve that let's first do like let's first love ourselves let's be comfortable comfortable in our own skin self love is important at the same time let's strive to be our better selves instead of trying to compete or try to fit into another image of someone else let's try to be better selves every day i think that's the best self help tip we all would agree right now to give away to each other and any fellow woman Absolutely. i think this this one more train the men in your life for house chores i think just goes yeah. a little very very long way <laughs> you know kind of uh, something um, i'm sure lockdown kind of made way for Yes, for uh, young age as well, they should be right. Like from a young age, uh, like both of them, girls and boys, should be taught the same things, and they grow up to become like. So then, it's not everything on the woman. Like the men itself, mentally become like that. I think that's important. for sure. Uh, it's it, it's it's just it's not just like also the uh, you know the actual load or like things of that that fall on women, but also the mental load of taking care of things. uh yeah. which is like a huge huge factor in the way uh, and and actually that leads very well into the next point that i also wanted to bring up is during the pandemic uh, like you know a lot of um, the burden of cooking and cleaning affects some of us more than it affects uh, you know the rest of the people so um how 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 do you how do you see this how do you make sure that like you know uh, you are not the one who's taking up everything like how, what are your thoughts generally on this Uh, on either the cooking uh, part of it or just like the mental load of all of this I think well, like I think um, what happened like especially in the pandemic and everything was I think see the role of women has definitely been predominantly um, in the kitchen even if they are working they are the ones who are actually like Uh, cooking as well as cooking and everything else, even if it is managing maids. Uh, but another interesting thing I also not- noticed was the roles, right? You like mothers, right? Like you know, it's like even if I, when I was like during the pandemic as well, like I wouldn't do too much in the kitchen, but my mom used to do it. And then when like the pandemic came, like everything got divided. Like you know, it was like it was like to be like my mom's like I'm not going to do this. She had to put her foot down, and that's when all the fuss are like, okay, you know what? This needs to be divided by four now, right? Right? like and that's when like all of us started uh, you know contributing so i even my dad in fact like you know like before that he his like he would make tea but that, that was the only thing like you know uh, morning tea but other than now he's actually started making breakfast he can do the dishes i think it's just a new skill set that everyone just acquired and uh, for that like something so drastic had to happen and like moms had to put their foot down and be like we can't do it like so i think that was really like i'm like okay yeah it's like you know yeah it's even roles and like you know what doing for so long um yeah it definitely like that changed i think a lot of women putting their foot down um you know can can change so many things that's a great example of that right um so um my uh, mother in law um and my uh, so my husband's parents basically have a, a very traditional relationship that way right uh, um his mom is responsible for everything in the kitchen um and his dad never really done anything related to the household um he's a very organized responsible person but um nothing related to all of this um and she got married pretty early and so one of the things she had promised herself was i'm not going to raise my sons like this and she has two sons um and um Uh, my husband's exactly opposite right he is um our relationship has always been um you know if, if you're taking on more responsibility physically and emotionally and things aren't going well for you um you know let everything else be for me and we we have always balanced it that way um so even even during the pandemic because we were both either um not working or working from home or one was uh, you know working from on um, the office um i think that mentality uh, really worked for both of us because it just helped uh not 
you know get things weird or whatever if, if it's just whoever's um it's just equal responsibility right? it doesn't have to mean that uh because i'm working longer hours um you know it, it's just balance it doesn't, it doesn't matter who's doing what um it, it's a balance and uh because my mother, uh, mother-in-law was strong enough to put her foot down and say this is what i'm going to teach my son i'm not going to let this happen the same thing with his, his dad can't even make the coffee nothing for himself right um he could if he wanted to but he doesn't um so and she so she decided early on that you know i'm not going to raise my son like this and so um you know good for me and good for him that we're both so independent and but we're so still so both so dependent and it, it works beautifully so putting you know women putting their foot down and saying uh, this is it like goes generations goes for generations i think um, so this just reminded me of a phrase like if we want something to change we need to be the change Yeah. Otherwise, your age-old stereotypes and patriarchy does not just absolutely. go away. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you can't wait for somebody else to say, "Yeah, somebody else will come do it." Right? Like, let let the, let the next generation take care of it. You got to start doing what you got to start doing. If you want to see something happen, uh, you know, make it happen. Absolutely. Uh, what about you, Joy or Apoorva? Anything you want to add on? I think I'm just too very lucky in this area, right? Like I think my husband does the majority of the work in my house, <laughs> so I got like lockdown. Um, I think not just lockdown. I think in general, like work from home would have been very very tough uh, if he wasn't around. I have a very hectic life in general. We launched new products through lockdown. Um, he's actually a pilot, and uh, there was no flying through lockdown, so he took up majority of our. Uh, household work right from you know dishes to cleaning taking care of if i'm eating at the time or not so i think the only real work i did was the actual cooking because he was never very comfortable or he wasn't very always very sure of like the salt and the masala but like um, he would make the dosas and anything that he can just like do himself he would kind of just do that so i don't have a lot of perspective you know just from the other side where i can definitely imagine the other stories uh, i'm sure at some point his mother or his grandma or somebody kind of made sure he was raised like this um uh, i also know like growing up my mother made sure that my brother and i were raised uh, to not feel these differences and in fact uh, i think i got a lot more privilege and she actually taught him cooking and then kind of just left me <laughs> to do whatever you want to do like yeah yeah that great so wo to seekh ki jayegi ha wo to seekh ki jayegi but she definitely made sure that you know uh, he could cook and uh, i think it came handy he moved to us and <laughs> so yeah I, i don't have a lot of like personal uh, experience around uh, those to kind of share around probably just been a little more lucky there yeah. uh, that's been joined you have anything to add on here Yeah, just a quick one. I I, I think I've I have a very supportive husband who has uh, who has always um, helped around even though it it's not something probably appreciated by his family. <laughs> But he he's probably the black sheep of the family. He he kind of uh, he has uh, um he's washed dishes and my mom this time she she's here visiting us and she said Uh, you've taught him how to you wash utensils very well i said i didn't have to teach him anything <laughs> <laughs> so he has his own cities so uh, yeah uh, so it hasn't been a problem uh, in having both of us working together he would chop the vegetables i would be doing the cooking or he'll be doing the dishes and i'll be probably picking them up and putting them in places so we would just share responsibilities and it was it was understood that it, it's uh, and also my husband really like doesn't like maids in the house So he was like this is a good opportunity for us to eliminate all maids and else. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, I think it just worked uh, for the better for us. Um okay, actually that's 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 a nice thing and one of the reasons you know like I was honestly not trying to plug the product here but one of the reasons why I think um a product like Julia that with really uh envisioning is that it changes like you know the narrative around that women have to be like the the have to carry all the culinary burden or like not just in terms of like cooking but also you know in terms of passing on recipes like for example if i don't know something how to cook like i think uh probably my mom would be blamed because she didn't teach me how to cook and there's there's a lot of it uh that you know uh, that we carry when it comes to food and cooking Uh, and and actually, uh, you all probably know the backstory behind why Julia was started. It was also that when Rohin was observing his mom trying and doing everything, 
uh, from like a nine to six job to making sure they had their meals on time, uh, you know, taking care of all of that. That's when you know uh, he really realized that there's something that needs to change here, uh, in the sense that you know we're trying to democratize cooking to an extent. Uh, and 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 yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons why we're here. And uh, one of the uh, types of users that we really hope to make an impact towards uh, are people, are women who unfortunately have to still cook due to some or the other context in their lives. Hopefully, if we can free them uh, and like you know let them uh, go on and break more barriers, I think that's 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 already like some amount of impact that we would have. Um, I think that's really uh, interesting, Anusha, because I think we still come from a lot of privilege when we have such families and such support systems. But if you look outside, it's it's really not the case. Like yes. honestly, it's definitely. I mean, like technology is the only thing that can probably democratize this because behavior and mindsets are way too deep to change right now. Like yeah. that. So I think that's that's a great uh, way. Like like how technology is actually democratizing it. Like as you said. So I think definitely. I think it's really interesting that you said that culinary burden also includes passing on skills as well, uh, recipes as well, right? Um, so um, my my husband likes to cook a lot of like random world cuisines, um, and so he's been cooking up a lot of sauces or dips of different kinds. Um, and every time we send our picture uh, pictures to our families, everyone's like, you know, they would call me and ask me for the recipe, and I'm like, I'm not the one who's made it, so ask him. Um, and in 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 the beginning, everyone's like, um, um, okay, but now they just know, and so now um, it, it's taken a while to change their mindset, or maybe now they ask who cooked it, um, and now maybe they they kind of say, um, you know, oh, I'm pretty sure Shreyas has made it now, right? Like now it's flipped the, the other way around. Like, oh, I'm sure you haven't made it uh, but it's taken a while but I think it took it, it did make a difference you know after I was doing it over and over again for them to realize oh it shouldn't always it doesn't have to always be heard uh, you know maybe he's doing it as well so um, it, it's very interesting that you brought that up because we never thought of it that way that you know even like for a recipe somebody would only call me yeah yeah absolutely and, and you know as a woman when I say I love cooking it's like uh, when I'm like even when a man does the absolute bare minimum when it comes to cooking, like we celebrate that so much. I mean, it's yes. it's great. We want more men to like come up, take equal yeah. responsibility, definitely. But it's not that it's like our default responsibility. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I think like cooking everyday meal and cooking when you like really feel like it, like that messed up bread is very different, right? Like I have to cook because we'll go hungry <laughs> versus like you know. आज कुछ अच्छा बनाते हैं. हाँ, you know like yeah, okay, I feel like um, you know like just doing something. But, yeah. yeah. Having cooking as a hobby and doing it like a chore is like very different. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and it's a basic necessity. I mean, it's a life skill to have. Otherwise, you might just go. Yeah. In a pandemic. Yeah. I think it, everyone, every individual need to know the basics of cooking, be it a man or a woman, otherwise you won't survive. That's that's the message I think we need to send out to everyone. Absolutely. Uh, what did you enjoy doing the most while Julia was cooking for you? Yeah, enjoy? Doing the most while Julia was doing the cooking for you. I was working like <laughs> 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 the life of a product manager. <laughs> yeah, that's the life of a product manager. But I think not having to get up and then uh, you know make sure. I think my biggest problem with continuous cooking is to like monitor temperature and then you leave for a bit. Kuch jal gaya aaj and then you know like you went through all of that effort. You you clean vegetables, you chop them, you put everything, and just because you got one call and you missed like you know uh, shutting the stove. I think that's that's something I really look forward for automation. to i think whether it's either julia whether it's air fryer or even like otg right like the or temperature control not needing you to stand there after you've loaded the ingredients is just such a like and constantly thing. stirring it <laughs> yeah like just all of it you know and not worrying ki it jal jayega <laughs> i think the only thing i need to do like every day which is not temperature control is boiling milk and you know how many days we just get rubbed out of it just because <laughs> it wasn't shut on so yeah i definitely think this uh, it was very like put you puts you at ease that it's going to turn out fine and it's not going to get burnt irrespective of whether you looked at it or did not look at it so yeah uh season what about you yeah 
I, I think apart from the first couple of times, I was just like looking at it and like, okay, what's yeah. happening? <laughs> yeah, like, I, like, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say I'm just watching it like a hawk the entire time. Then exactly. I was on a video call with somebody else who wanted to watch it. Right? <laughs> yeah, um, so it's like I started <laughs> half of my time and Julia video calling people who were like, oh, let me see, let me see. I'm like, I want to see the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. Like I was like with all my family groups. I think I made a video also. People were like, how? Where did the ingredients go? Like I was like, okay, like you know, this is like that's what I was doing for one week. Uh, but I think it did give my mom a lot of time to go walk and like meet her friends in the evening. And we could easily host dinners. Like we hosted, I think two dinners where Julia made like everything. We like okay, pasta done. You know, butter paneer done. Come, let's all the pasta food. I think that was really easy to host parties. <laughs> I enjoy what about you so uh, uh i in the afternoons i enjoyed my husband uh, fill, filling up julia <laughs> you know basically arranging everything for julia and i could have a hot meal and uh, in the evenings um i would be doing that and i would just sit and relax and you know spend time with my daughter uh because i wouldn't have had the time and opportunity to do that the whole day uh what i enjoy the most of course not standing in the kitchen and doing it all you know and constantly monitoring food um you know while my daughter really is looking forward for me to sit down and watch some something with her on on television or just chit chat about her day So I think I enjoyed the time with my family uh, the most uh, while Julia was cooking up a meal for us. Um that's that's great. Uh Shamali anything apart from <laughs> you watching I, i i mean if if i'm thinking long term if i were to actually have julia at home i think it it would help that um i can go do something else because when i start cooking i just go crazy and I'll like make five other dishes with it um i don't like i'm very experimental cook i don't like to cook cook every day things i just absolutely hate every day ka khana cooking um so i think that's the one thing that will stop me from making all of these crazy nonsense things on the side which just takes up all of my time so yeah but otherwise when i actually had julia i just all my I'm just went and looking at it, like genuinely just looking at what's going on. You know, see if something's going wrong, something's going right. Like everything, that's all. Um, great. I mean, I think uh, before we uh, got it for deployments in the ba- in Bangalore, uh, we actually tested it ourselves. Uh, and for that two week uh, long period that I had Julia over at my place, I really enjoyed my showers because when I have to rush to work, like I usually just like take a five minute shower, but I really, really. <laughs> got to like you know take a little bit longer shower sorry environment but yes i had a lot of fun <laughs> um, but uh, do you um, do you guys have anything sorry do you ladies have anything to add on anything that you want to like part on with thoughts uh, i'll i'll just say that when i wanted to Give do this <laughs> ഫുഡ് meet a lot of you and understand a lot of you and i think this has been like really lovely talking to all of you thank you so much for taking the time out um yeah all right so uh, we'll all hit you up with pani puri recipes <laughs> like asking for <laughs> uh but thanks again thank you so much uh, for taking the time out and we really hope to uh, see you around in any of our community events or you know taste some of our recipes uh joy please don't kill us <laughs> but yes <laughs> Um, I shall see you soon. <laughs> all right. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely meeting you, you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.